Hello, I'm Michelle Shannon and I'm back again. Today we are going to do a, a topic that I really was hesitant to do. Um, I had planned to do one topic and I was given a message prophetically that I should do another. And so that's the one we're going to do. Um, what I was called upon to talk about is understanding salvation. Like I said, I wasn't prepared to talk about that, but I was called to speak on it. So here we go. First of all, I want to make sure that everybody knows that the reason I do these these uh, little videos is because I want to promote uh, the messages of Maria Divine Mercy. She has a website, thewarningsecondcoming.com, so I want to encourage you to go to that website where you can find more information about the Book of Truth. This is the Book of Truth. The Book of Truth is um, actually prophetic messages that Maria Divine Mercy is getting from God the Father, Jesus Christ, and Mary the Mother of Jesus. And all of these messages have been compiled into actually three books. These three books are the um, Book of Truth that is referred to in the Bible. The last time I did my message, I believe I, uh, one of my messages, I believe I gave the um, Bible verses that refer to the Book of Truth. But the Book of Truth is the uh, apocalyptic document that would be sealed up till end times and then would be opened. And so it has been opened and the, this is what I will be reading from today along with the Bible as I give this little message. So here we go. Um, first of all, um, what we need to understand about salvation. Um, there's some basic concepts you um, really need to be able to understand before you can move forward with the salvation process. And those are, um, you know, just simple things like, uh, do you believe in God? Do you believe in heaven and hell? And um, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And um, those concepts and understandings are real important as you begin this process of um, of. Uh, accepting Jesus Christ and salvation. Um, so very briefly, it's um, I want to define the levels of spirituality that um, a person might find themselves or a soul might be in in this human experience. And the first level would just be to be um, able to understand those concepts. And then you are beginning to be spiritual. If you aren't able to embrace any of those concepts, then you're just spiritually void. Or I refer to it as spiritually dysfunctional, but that doesn't sound as nice. Probably spiritually void sounds um, a little better. So we'll go with spiritually void. And then there are spiritually weak people who um, have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior or have at least embraced these concepts but they don't go beyond that. And then there's the more spiritually, uh, spiritual people who are um, embracing the concepts and walking the walk. So those are certain, the three basic places you might find yourself in. To understand, um, hopefully you're at least in a place where you accept that there's a heaven and hell. And I actually have um, a little information in my book here that I want to share with you. And this is from, um, let's see if I can find my place. I did mark it. This is in the book of truth, uh, what Jesus says about hell. So I'm going to just read this. It might be interesting to you. So um, it's on the date, uh, Saturday, September 24th, 2011. And it's, the title of it is Explain the Horror of Hell to Those Who Are Blind to the Existence of Satan. So, it says, My dearly beloved daughter, why does man persist in denying the existence of hell? Many of my children who consider themselves to be modern in their outlook publicly deny the existence of hell when proclaiming their belief in God and the Eternal Father. They mislead my children when they use the excuse that God is ever merciful. By convincing my children that all will go to heaven, 
they unwitt unwittingly become responsible for those who follow their faulty doctrine. And this is signed by Jesus. So this is where this is coming from. Uh, Satan exists and therefore so does hell. Hell is a place where Satan takes those souls who show allegiance to him. These are the souls who push aside all thoughts of God and promote the acceptance of evil acts in the world. There's more, but I'm going to let you go to this again. It's September 24th, 2011, and look this up at the website, thewarningsecondcoming.com. But if you go further down, it says, Children of mine, please explain the horrors of hell to those who are blind to the existence of Satan. No matter if they laugh and hurl abuse at you, it is your duty to warn them of the terrifying fate that awaits any poor soul who ends up there. And then there's more, and then it goes down to the bottom where it says, Pray, pray, all of you, so together we can save these souls. Satan must not allow be allowed to steal their souls. Help me save them while they st still live on earth. And it's signed, Your Beloved Jesus. So I thought that was, that was a good one to share with you uh, as we're talking about whether or not people believe in the existence of heaven or hell. Um, then there's, um, uh, to, to the point as far as whether or not people believe in God, um, Jesus says in one of the messages, I'm not going to read that today, but he talks about the reasons why people don't believe in God. And um, what he tells us is that they are so full of ego that they have not got room there's just too, too full of ego um, to have room for God. And it is their ego that won't let them believe. And then also that um, they are led by Satan, uh, the deceiver. So um, those are some things uh, why people are not functioning spiritually and aren't able to um, even embrace the idea of God. Um, one of the big messages in the book that I'm reading, the book of truth, is that uh, Jesus often reminds us that we need to humble ourselves before God. And um, he asks us to ask for forgiveness of our sins. And um, for the ones who are really following the messages and really getting into um, the following the uh, requests of Jesus to pray every day, read the Bible every day. Uh, he asked us to spend actually 10 minutes in uh, quiet time just being sorry for our sins. And that's how we humble ourselves before God. So um, that's real important. Um, it's also real important in the message of salvation. Um, basically, the, the key elements to salvation, uh, going, being able to spend eternity in going to heaven with Jesus Christ, eternity in G with Jesus Christ, is really all about, um, first of all, acknowledging that we are sinners and sin separates us from God. So if we have separated ourselves from God, we cannot go to heaven unless uh, we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. Jesus died on the cross to pay our sin debt in full. And it was through his blood being shed that we are saved. So what I want to do is read to you something now out of the Bible. Um, and this is John 13, no, John 14. Bring this up here. John 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus saith unto him, him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And it's that simple. This is how you get to heaven, is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. You have to repent of your sins and accept what Jesus did for you. And um, so it really is um, a matter of um, understanding 
what he did for us and loving him for what he did for us. Now, I also want to address the often misunderstood concept, the misconception that uh, we can go to heaven through our good works. I have heard over and over people say, well, I don't think God, I know good people who don't believe in Jesus or don't, aren't Christian, but they do good works and, and they'll go to heaven too. Um, I'm not their judge. I'm just telling you uh, what is in the Bible. But it's not through good works that we get to heaven. And when they roll out the one world religion, they're going to get people so busy with good works. That's going to be their number one focus because they know this religion that's led by the beast, they know that you don't get to heaven through good works. Good works are fine if you believe in Jesus Christ first. Then your good works actually will, will determine um, how your placement in heaven, how close you get to God. That's where good works come in. And good works are wonderful. But if you didn't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, all the good works that you did will lead to um, lead the other direction, let me put it that way. Um, so it's important to accept Jesus Christ first, then you can get busy with the good works. So just so you're clear on that, um, good works are great. They're great. And, and um, they, will, they will help you in the long run, but they won't get you into heaven. So I hope everybody understands that. So that's it, the message I didn't want to do, but I was um, called to do. And um, uh, that's it, I'm keeping it short today. Now, um, what I want to do is just do my uh, little wrap this up part. And first of all, my name again is Michelle Shannon, and my website is michelleshannon.com. If you are watching this, then it's my job to help you navigate to help navigate you spiritually through end times by directing you to the website, thewarningsecondcoming.com, and encouraging you to um, read all the information you can that is on that website. Begin to read the messages, the prophetic messages from Jesus Christ. Um, also, I want to uh, add that if you are a follower of the messages of Maria Divine Mercy, because sometimes I post these videos in those groups in, uh, on Facebook, if you are already a follower, it's not my job to lead you through end times. Jesus is leading you direct, directly. But if you share this with your friends on Facebook, then I can help those who are not already going to the website, and I can encourage them as well. Okay, then um, this is a spiritual battle, um, the battle through end times that we fight, and um, we're going to fight this battle through prayer. Jesus is looking for fierce warriors for his remnant army, for God's remnant army, and uh, if you would like to join a prayer group in your area, you can go to the website and log on the homepage on the top right hand corner. You will find um, there is a tab for prayer groups and you can find your um, pr a prayer group uh, in your area. Now, if there is not a prayer group in your area, I would encourage you to pray for discernment because this might be what God is asking you to do. He might be asking you to start your own prayer group. Um, I can help you with that, and there's information on the website to help you as well. Jesus loves you. I'm here for you. Have a very good day. Have a blessed day. Thank you.